And hello, welcome to the Hinge Games live stream. I'm Bjorn Swenson. I'm Jock Choi. Cool. And uh, yeah, so we got lots of interesting stuff happening over the last week. Some Steam stuff uh, added a shop to our dungeons, and I set up the credits. Jock, what did you? What were you working on? Just working on our little soon-to-be-announced demo. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Just uh, doing some uh, visual upgrades to some things. Uh, still working on it, as you can nonstop. <laughs> I can't need to yeah. pull away from it. Yeah, mm. and uh, I did some other things with... Uh, actually, that's pretty much what it was. I did uh, a few other yeah. things like uh, UI stuff and whatever, but we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, yeah, we're gonna, there's a, a few things we're going to be doing to pass on in the UI, but I think most of that work will probably be over the next week or two. Like it's, mm -hmm. right now, it's mostly uh, the in-game stuff. Yeah, that we'll be working on. So yeah, I guess I'll uh, launch on real. Yeah, so yeah, I added uh, some shop stuff. I'll go over that first. The Steam stuff. I don't really think there's anything to show for that mm -hmm. uh, on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. But, yeah, yeah. Where are we? There we are. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's like, just, I guess I can go over that we, we set up. So there's going to be a free demo of the game. Uh, this is just going to be playing the dungeon, procedural dungeons. There's going to be a uh, early access version of the game that's going to be include the dungeon builder and the puzzle builder and then we have a beta branch which is the whole game but that's that's down the line and it's it's set up but we're not really using it for anything so here something we integrated today is these are there's food in these chests so i'm going to open up this one this is just some honey it's a placeholder asset but it's like uh, this gives me a bonus to move speed so you can see i got a little buff on my on my HUD, it says like a little three, and there's a little icon of a winged boot, and it run way faster now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, yeah. So there's uh in Dungeon Builder, there's just a ton of food you could place, and these are all it's all the treasure chest icons. But we'll do a, a swap icon swap later on. But yeah, loads of different food, tons of different buffs you can get, and you can obviously when you're building a puzzle, uh, you can add some of that stuff. A lot of it's it's not really puzzle related. Like the speed one, I think is kind of puzzle related, but a lot of it is just going to be like, oh, this is, uh, you know, makes you do more damage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And let's see. So we'll do this, and then here's the shop. So now I'll run down in here, and the shop can spawn uh, in procedural dungeons, and players can put it in their custom dungeons as well. It just gives you six chests with random stuff inside that you have to pay for. When you put it in uh, your puzzle, it's free. But when it shows up in the shop, it's stuff you have to pay for. And uh, we'll there's also... actually swap it with like a table of, of the food item, though, eventually, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll the, th the thing is, there's a lot of logic in the chest that we're taking advantage of. We might we oh, could okay. reskin it. But yeah. like, uh, yeah, because the thing is, like, we need to make sure there's enough space in between the items so yeah. that, yeah. So that the UI doesn't overlap and stuff like that. So maybe it'll it'll be some kind of a table with uh, yeah. a food item on it, but we'll just a reskin. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Once we get the food. And well, the thing is too, like it, it's not necessarily just food. It could be like a key or a dungeon map yeah. as well. And there's even yeah, you don't see any of it here, but uh, there's like a disguise and stuff like that. This disguise we've talked about it on other streams, but yeah, yeah. there's disguise kits that'll help you sneak past enemies. And that's the shop. And then, yeah, the other, the other thing I did is we implemented the credits. We started, like, poking people and be like, hey, what kind of title? Hey, this is what we're doing for the credits. What What's your title? Mine's just going to be designer. Jock's just going to be artist. <laughs> Keep it a fairly couple. Thing. The, director, yeah. the director title is kind of strange, but required mm. for LinkedIn, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's, it's in certain situations, it's, like, kind of expected if, you, if you're not that then it's like people don't i don't know it's it's weird to be 
it's weird to call yourself a director when our team's this small, but it's like when you're talking to other people on the business side. You don't have like kind. tons of subordinates. You don't really have like a lead or a department of other people. Yeah, to yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're talking no about the business end and stuff like that, it's like usually, yeah, you have to present yourself as a director of some sort because you're in charge of a company. Yeah. They're going to want to talk to the boss. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so <laughs> that's mostly me. Yeah, well, yeah. Steve, yeah, credit tip. Yeah. Oh, right on. Oh. Okay, and so what I did this week was I bought some rocks. <laughs> uh, I, I like how my friend Lindsay commented on how she loved those rocks. So these mm -hmm. rocks were bought from the Steam store, and uh, I didn't actually do a whole lot of change. I did no changes to them, actually. I just uh, resized yeah. the texture, put the proper compression on, and I just filled it up. So now we've got these awesome mm -hmm. rock formations. I, I bought them because they're stylistically very similar to our cliffs that we had already made. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe the the it's a little higher fidelity with like the detail mapping, but I mean I might even just get rid of that. And uh, yeah, it's it's just been it's really cool. And so I just started like putting them all around. So when I play the game, let me just get this. When I play through the game, you get these like nice little rocks here. Uh, we had to do a bit of a finagling of them. Try and get like make yeah, sure they ooh, don't. I think uh, the collision and interference was quite there. There's some yeah. weird stuff going on on my end with the stream. It looks like. Hold on, one sec. The stream. Yeah. Hmm. That's really weird. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, no. Okay. I think uh, there must be some. Let me uh try plan around this because there's some weird color stuff going on. Oh, interesting. I like that. That. Hmm. So, oh, the black. You got black weirdness. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. That's not cool. I don't see that on my end, so. It looks like you have your sec a second image of the dungeon overlaid on there. Yeah. Like you can see the, uh, you can see the, uh, Brick pattern down there. Let's see. If Is I, it an OBS issue? I close this? Mm -hmm. I think it might be some kind of mask issue. Uh, okay. But down yeah. There. Hmm. Oh, it's gone now. Oh no! No, no, it's no, no. Uh, hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can fix this. On stream. That and then I'll switch to studio mode. Which camera was that? Oh yeah. Okay, so one of them was masked and the other one. Hmm, this is odd. Ah, uh, that's what it was. There was a chroma key on it. <laughs> uh, that'll do it. That helps. There we go. All right. So, uh, yeah, I put a lot of these rocks all over the place. And uh, yeah, put them uh, put them in the background there. And I just kind of wanted to add a few kind of like, we had to make sure they didn't interfere with the gameplay area. We had to make sure that they didn't interfere with the collision. So I had to set mm -hmm. the really, really big ones really big and the small ones I, I resized and uh, made them kind of just so that you don't really, they don't really interfere with your, uh, your walking mm -hmm. around. And as you can see, I made some new uh, foliage, some new bushes as well. Just kind of wanted to match the style of... Uh, of these things and as you can tell mm -hmm. they're kind of parallaxed but i'm currently in the midst of wanting to add a normal map to them just so that we get some more uh lighting values than just kind of this flat almost borderline cartoon shaded looking thing mm -hmm. but it, it'll eventually get there mm -hmm. but the, these kind of work well enough because it's sort of like the uh kind of like 
hair cards in a lot of way where the it's a fine enough detail but this i think the plates are a little too big i'm these need to kind of be broken up a bit so that's what mm -hmm. i'll do and uh, as you've may noticed oh yeah i also have these little stumps there <laughs> yeah. so, could, so rather than like you can see the branches there and as you kind of like cut them down it just kind of the stump remains or the flowers there i have a bunch okay. of new flowers <laughs> they're slightly different than the the epic ones and just kind of more sparse so there's kind of like only four of them at a time and mm -hmm. uh yeah so that's pretty much what it is um yeah i like cutting these things down did you you have to do something with fixing the kind of hit the hit box oh, the collision that? yeah 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 that's yeah. my bad i probably did yeah. With it. yeah once you submit it i'll do a pass and just because yeah. there should just be a volume there that if yeah. you hit it Kind so of, I also kind of added these uh, legs on the bridge now, so now you get to see them kind of go all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Blue did jello you? water. I think we did some minor tweaks to the blue jello water too. Yeah, yeah. And I did. Uh, I did some minor uh, tweaks and touches to the uh, guy. I did some minor tweaks and touch-ups to the uh, just the terrain a bit, and kind mm -hmm. of just minor changes. Cause like I, I wanted to call these things a bit a bit tighter. I wanted. I wanted to go from grass to dirt before we go to the sand, just because I kind of mm -hmm. wanted like a little bit more. Ah, this I need to fix this floating, yeah, yeah. floating oh, yeah. rock. I, I moved it because I think when uh when we relocated all of the trees, what happens mm -hmm. is is like then the rocks just kind of like uh, the tree kind of planted above the rock, so I had to move it out oh, of the okay. way, get it, kind of move the rock yeah. back, and I forgot to move this. There back. is um. I'll have to double check because I think there might be a setting on those to for to snap them to the ground. If there isn't, I can. Yeah, no, that there is, but the, pro the yeah. problem. Oh, to the ground rather than to the terrain. Uh, well, no, basically, because if it, if they if they get set to snap to the ground, then they'll just snap to a surface. Yeah. So when it was snap, it was basically hopping on top of the yeah. rock. So if but if you, way, basically, yeah, if back. the thing is, if they're all going to be at the same level anyway, you don't need to snap them anywhere, right? You can just move oh, them okay. to the proper height, and then yeah. then they'll just be there. Okay. Yep, and uh, it's probably a very subtle thing, but I added some of these rocks just kind of in the back and some more of these kind of legs to make it look a bit more lived in. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love these rocks. I love play I'm a professional rock placer now. That's my thing. <laughs> I sneak past this guy. Oh, nice. And where did I go? Yeah. You know, it's a demo level, but it'd be nice to kind of put something back back here. Put like mm -hmm. this here. Can't really see the dojo underneath there. Well, no, it's hidden when you're up there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But it's just kind of funny. Yeah. You walk down there, and it's like you're clearly you walking end up out there. Yeah. It's like the TARDIS. It's uh, it's not the same base. Exactly. Oh, actually, this is a ramp. Oh, there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not really egregious, but I gotta yeah, be careful terrible, of this rock but... shape formation because you can walk up it, right? Yeah. Wonky. Can I walk up that one? No. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was good. Yep. And oh yeah, I think I got rid of this. Yeah. It was a bit strange, right, having these things. Uh, well, they see. It's a bit strange now. I was going to have more like lighting effects, so I thought it'd be mm -hmm. less strange. So yeah. I was going to have like more light shafts come up here. I kind of that's why I kind of darkened the scene a bit because I wanted mm -hmm. to play around with more light shafts to make it seem like there were clouds in the sky. So mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'll, I might. As of right now, that looks really strange. So I'll probably try to get rid of these. But I, I want to see what it mm -hmm. look like with more light shafts and more, uh, and more fog. Uh, fog clouds. I kind of want to play around with fog cards in like these kinds of areas here, so we get like mm -hmm. the the blue fog, the teal fog around there, and uh, yeah, play around with a bit more of the fog cards. Get some more depth, especially by the watery areas, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that will. Uh, once I get kind of enough atmosphere built up, it the mm -hmm. these little these things won't look too strange, but we'll see. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, they look it, it, they don't look yeah. like regular god rays, right? They look like this kind of special magical one that Yeah, that's like true. typically you'd only put it on like, oh yeah, this is the your objective and we need to make sure like we're doing yeah. some extra stuff to make sure it's super highlighted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll just put some regular god like light shafts around. It's not gonna be the effect light shaft, more just like a, a geometry 
Cool. Collision free geometry, I guess. Oh. <gasps> I didn't kill this dude. Yeah. No, you snuck past him. Die! <laughs> oh boy. I think I'm a bit overpowered with this demo. Uh, well, you're level three. It's, yeah. You know how to. The thing is, like, this is just the tutorial area, so these guys are supposed to be super easy. All right. Cool. And uh, last but not least, I we purchased another asset that required quite a bit of cleanup, and that's this Xbox 360 controller. Uh, Xbox One controller. Xbox One controller, right. Xbox oh, yeah. 360 controller is the best controller ever made, but yeah, <laughs> this ain't bad. <laughs> the lighting looks okay here. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty terrible in the dungeon, so I think I have yeah, to do... It's a, bit, uh, a bit harder to read in the dungeon, for sure. Yeah, I have to do like a UI. Uh, there's all UI light channel yeah. I think I can use. I mean, the important thing on it is basically the uh, direction that the analog sticks are moving. We're not really using it well, and the, the right trigger there that's glowing. Yeah... So I don't have a back but, of that trigger. Should I model a back there? No, well, that's all you see, so... Oh, no, there is a back there. Oh, okay. Hmm? For some reason, I thought that button was, like, back-free. I thought it was see-through, but... No. Oh, no, no, it's just glowing. Because it's... You're supposed to press it. Cool. Mm hmm Yeah. And uh, we'll see how this... See if we can... I'm, play... I'm playing with the keyboard right now. It seems to be working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, that, I that's... 360. Something we were talking about was basically like keyboard and mouse support because there's you could you can technically do everything. There's stuff that I'm not sure about. Like you don't have some of the abilities and some of the abilities are mapped to button. Everything, but I think you should be able to do everything on a mouse and keyboard. But I'll have to make sure. You can even do a 360. Yeah, oh, that's correct. Well, that that's the 180. That's not the 360. The 360 is the spin spiral that shoots out in all directions. That's 180. That's 180. Uh, you you yeah. probably don't have the 360 unlocked in melee. That one gets uh, okay. up. That's the spin attack. But in ranged, you could do a 360 if you want to try it. <laughs> it's kind of tough. Yeah, there you go. That was it. Yeah, it's obviously way easier to do these combos on a controller. Yeah. But we want to... Uh, cause like, yeah, that's something we're debating for Steve is like, we prefer to just have to support the controller. We can do it on a mouse keyboard. It's not quite as fun, but, but if you don't have, like, we'd rather you be able to play the game at least. Yeah. And we do have it. We do have a disclaimer at the beginning of the game. When you load it up, say we recommend using a, a, a game pad. So you can see you highly recommend it. The, uh, the, uh, like none of this stuff is really mandatory either it seems mm -hmm. so it doesn't seem like you really need to do it uh, not really yeah how oh, did you, you unlock have... all the abilities yeah you have all the abilities unlocked my time stop goes on for a while wow although being an avid diablo player i'm actually realizing some of the cycling between these things might actually be a lot better yeah well, what do you mean uh just, I, I remember when I got really good at Diablo, I was shifting between different skills. And, like, if you could hotkey these, yeah, you'd, you could, like, time stop, shoot a bunch of fire arrows, and then, like, do a 360-something, and then twin yourself, and, and then uh, do, like, yeah. a, a rapid shot of this. And, yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff mm -hmm. you do. If you get really yeah. good at, like, hotkeying that, like, F1, F2, you know. Yeah, that was something up. I found in, um, what was it, Heroes of Hammerwatch? They had a lot of... Uh... At the high level players, uh, you could program macros, yeah. and there were guys that would just run through entire levels, and they they were high enough level that they'd just be spamming this uh, like three hundred and sixty degree arrow attack that was just, just yeah. through the entire level, killing everything instantly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I actually did another pass on the grass. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I? Oh yeah, I just realized I never talked about the movement. The movements in there now. Oh it's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not it's, static uh, grass there. It's also here. I have a bit of rustling with leaves. I don't know how annoying that gets, but I think because right now it's pretty wavy. Is there any yeah. way you could get like, yeah? Because I don't know. I don't know enough about shaders, but like, is there any way you could get like individual leaves to kind of wave rather than the whole well, thing? I will ask Bruno, but I because like there is a 
there is some, here, let me check. Go for the, yeah. Fern, let's go for this thing up. Be nice if we have one of those unreal experts in here right now. So, uh, okay. additional WPO. So waving wind grass, grass would be textured to a full sheet. So maybe this, it's got something to do with that. Yeah. Where, let me actually just double, like, <laughs> not that I want to oh, like, check this is Google grass wind. Screen, but... Okay. Okay, yeah, so that's grass wind, which is why it's getting that, because that's yeah. kind of giving the... Um... World position offset. But, mm -hmm. but if you can offset it by using a texture, I just don't quite know what this would look like. Here, let, let me... Mm. The, the original one had the, the texture, like, just thrown in here, but... Mm -hmm. Bruno mentioned it is an additional shader instruction when you do that, so it's probably not worth it. Oh, what happens yeah. here? Yeah, it just looks like seaweed, yeah. Because mm -hmm. these yeah. are all on individual cards, so they could move independently. But mm -hmm. maybe it's, they're also kind of, the way I modeled it, they're all sort of on the same level. Mm -hmm. So if I were to offset, well, maybe if I were to offset the levels a bit of each... I think because like based on how that card is laid out, yeah, it's um, like this. They're just yeah. flat. The reason I did it flat per level like this was because mm -hmm. I didn't want the intersection to happen between the two different ones. We don't get mm -hmm. any intersection between the two cards, like even with mm -hmm. the movement. So yeah. that's why I set it up like that, just to be a lot more intentional. But I could offset them a bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, because the, the, the thing I'm thinking, because the way. So again, I don't know how the math would work on this, but ba based on the way you have that laid out, because basically the top half of the texture is just the leaf. Yep. Right? Yep. So, and if you, yeah, it's something we need to talk to a tech artist about, But because basically what you would want to do is, because you want to rotate it from the pivot of the root of the leaf, because that's how it would blow in the wind, right? Yeah. And yep. based on the way you have it laid out, that seems like that should be pretty doable. Yeah, um, maybe if there's a flow, is that what the additional WPO is? Is if it's a flow map, I could probably just or some kind of a flow mm -hmm. map. But let me see, world position offset. Uh, w W map. World position offset. Three three. World position offset. There we go. World position offset allows them to be in the world space by the material. Ambient animation. Okay. Yeah. May lead to shading errors. Scale balance. So I don't really know what a world position offset would look like. And hmm. Is it a texture or is it it there? Okay. Position offset texture. So that's the case. I could probably do something with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems to be a texture, so I hmm. I'll I'll see. But the thing is if it's if it's tied to uv space i might need a second uv channel for each individual leaf on this thing yeah mm. i don't know if you'd need that necessarily it's, that's the thing is like i i don't think that's something it's it's something we'll we'll quiz a tech yeah. artist about because it's like they'll probably yeah. but like the way you have model and everything it seems doable yeah it, it, yeah. it seems like theoretically doable okay yeah uh, yeah, because right now it is it's using the grass stuff, which is like Yeah. Well, hold on a sec. I'm being called. Hold on, sorry about this. All right, that's fine. I'll uh hold on. Switch over to uh, switch over to interview and let's see. I guess I can actually switch to this. Alright, so 
Anything else that I should talk about? Yeah, something we were talking about is basically that I was working on just before the stream started is switching because we have icons for like all the buttons and stuff like that. And then just something I was setting up was like, okay, if you press a button on the keyboard, switch to keyboard icons. If you press a button on the gamepad, switch to game gamepad icons. But uh, And I have sort of that working, but I don't have any of the keyboard buttons set up yet. And I'll have to do a pass to make sure all of them make sense because i think a lot of them I've, we've been we've been focusing pretty much game on the gamepad primarily uh and I, I think i've tried to make sure that all the buttons are accounted for on the keyboard but they're probably not intuitive or comfortable to use in a lot of ways uh so i'll, I'll be doing a pass on that over the next week and making sure that it's all and like when you talk to somebody like when you go up to somebody and there's a tutorial or anything like that like uh oops. So, yeah, like here, when I go up to this person and it says press A to talk and X to use the puzzle builder, I'll switch out those icons for something else. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, they're for the equivalent keyboard buttons. I think it'll probably be E and R or F or something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, go on here. I wonder if I could actually, let's, let's see if I could get a map. Cause it's kind of fun when you get a map of a puzzle and it'll be so again it'll it'll be something you could place in a procedurally or it'll something that the shops or something that can get placed in a procedural dungeon but also uh they can you can place them in a room in your custom dungeon so that uh let's see what we got cupcake pizza watermelon coconut and these have different prices like some of them because there's different levels for all the boosts they give you. Some of them are like level one. They go from level one to three. All right. And I just added placeholder text. We got like a pack of low poly stuff. So I'll just buy a sandwich. There we go. That's what it looks like. Ham and cheese sandwich, baby. And I now have extra stamina recovery. So I should be able to do... Yeah, my stamina does not go down at all. That fact might be a little ridiculous. <laughs> I might have to balance that. Uh, yeah, I just put these in today. I thought they were, well, I tuned them down a bit. I guess I didn't tune them down enough. Ramen. Ooh, that's even more bonus stamina. That or that, So there's a difference between bonus stamina and bonus stamina recovery. Bonus stamina increases your max stamina. Bonus stamina recovery increases how fast it regens. Give it similar results, but can have different effects depending on what exactly you're doing. Because, for example, like running around and stuff like that, uh, and doing melee and things like that, your stamina recovers less slowly. So even doing, uh, even when you have high stamina, uh, even if you have high stamina recovery, it's still going to recover a lot more slowly if you're doing melee and constantly constant attacking and stuff like that. To have it re uh, recover the max speed, you have to stand still and not do anything. And then if you have higher max stamina, then be able to do more melee combos in a row. Oh, it's something else something else I did. I added Jock's gonna do another pass on these, but I had uh I updated the map icon, so big more easy to read. You can see there's a puzzle room there. I have the big blue dots in the bottom right corner. Oh yeah, something else. I don't, I don't think I talked about this, but let's, let's exit out of here. I can go to the demo. Uh, I set stuff up for the demo where... So you can play the demo, start a new one, easy. For that. Uh, developer only judges. Oh, hey, welcome back, man. Hey, sorry about that. No, no problem. I just started talking about random stuff. I don't know if I All covered right. this last week. Uh, but I added in things for, like, as you're playing the demo. Uh, so normally throughout the game, new monsters show up. You go through, if you're playing the campaign, there's a bunch of different worlds. And as you play through all the different worlds, 
different monsters. You unlock like different monsters. I don't have Jacques' latest art changes. That's why I'm still using the old uh, old bushes there. But basically, get around this guy and get to dungeon. So the way I've set up progression to work in this is like in the in the campaign, it's like there's different enemies for each world. Uh, but since you don't progress that way in the demo, I set it up so the higher level you get, the more powerful guys you'll fight in the dungeon. So you fight different enemies, uh, and then the bigger enemies. Like, there's different sizes. There's many small, medium, and large enemies. and They obviously get harder and harder as they get bigger and bigger. So, yeah, you'll fight... Uh, if, you, if you play long enough and get high enough level, get enough experience and level up, up enough, you'll get to fight some pretty tough enemies. In the dungeon. Yeah. So, so I think I'm reading about this. I have to actually uniquely unwrap each thing and have like a UV two. Okay. Yeah. A uh, UV two, and then each each UV will have its own kind of texture map, determining how much like the timing, I guess, of where. I mean, that's one way to do it. Maybe I could just if I could use a uh, vertex color. I could mm -hmm. be, it could be a lot cheaper rather than load another draw call. Mm -hmm. That might be able to work. Then I could just assign a, another random, randomize all the vertex color colors on this mm -hmm. thing. So, we'll yeah, get slightly different. If not, I'm not against shutting the entire thing off. Like, yeah, it, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look terrible when it's off. Yeah, and like as you walk through it, it still like waves back and forth and stuff. So yeah. We could even just slow it down. Uh, we, we slow down a lot with just kind of like underwater seaweed, right? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it super slow. Is that what it's doing right now? Oh, I guess go point two, go point five, and uh, point five. Wind speed, and then point. Yeah, that looks. That doesn't even look like it's underwater necessarily it looks like i'm looking through a water surface <laughs> yeah yeah it's a bit strange it's all kind of because it's it's all mm -hmm. kind of coordinated together i'll, I'll see if yeah, I, exactly. I'll, I'll break it up or i'll just get rid of it yeah okay yeah because like really you're all kind of individual but yeah 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 well that and that's because the, the thing is like the what the reason it works for grass is because typically the way wind moves through the grass is it affects large patches of it and it kind of rolls through, right? Yeah. Whereas that, like, uh, sort of, I guess you'd say the resident frequency of the leaves isn't necessarily consistent, so they all kind of, like, move their, on their own. Maybe there is another thing, another way to do this. Uh, there's a wind node, like a flipbook wind, or yeah, the simple grass seems to be a common way to do it. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'll have to offset it then with uh, mm -hmm. with a texture or a vertex color. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing texture. I'm guessing a texture though, but it could be a tiny, tiny texture. Yeah, considering it'll just be like flat colors, each each leaf will just kind of move independently from each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well. Yeah, because the thing is, too, like, I guess that, I guess, yeah, yeah, that would work. It's like, if they're, even if they're doing this, then it would yeah, probably work different... well if they were moving independently. Yeah, if they're moving independently, it'll work a lot better. Mm -hmm. Like, some of this stuff, like, are clipping through the ground, though. Mm -hmm. I find the grass is oh, weird, because yeah. some of them move and some of them just don't, and I don't really oh, know. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. If that's a, a bug. Yeah, that's really, it's really weird. Do I ha are there two grasses here? Maybe. Well, there there should only be one. It's it'd be on the landscape. Yeah. So it's grass. Grass, grass is where I put it, right? So the easy way to test this is I put this down to let's so grass mesh. Nineteen members. Why are there 19 members? Oh, it's all this stuff. The lighting channel, flower, flower, two, flower, three, flower, four, and flower, five, and that's it. So it should just be that. 
Hmm. So technically, if I put the if you number if you open up that grass mesh, what does it look like? Grass mesh. It looks like this. So there are some not moving in that mesh too. Interesting. But it, it's material based though. Based on materials, so why would only yeah. some of them be moving and some of them not? I don't know. I don't know enough about material. Like, is could it be based on like the extra UV channels or uh, some vertex UV coloring channel. or something? Or okay, so uh, UVs we got channel this, and we have our. Channel one. Channel. Really? Sh so this is our channel. This is the channel we're using. Wait a second. I think I know what's going on. That means one of us. Oh no, it's not. I have no idea what it is. Oh okay. god. Hmm. Not really sure why, because it's only one texture, and it's yeah. the movement is done in there, huh? Yeah. What's the material look like again? Could you go to the material? It's pretty simple. Material is uh, this, and it's just got the entire simple grass wind weight on it. Yeah, and it's multiplying it by the vertex color. Oh wait, that, no, it's not the fern one. It's the grass one. Hold on, wait a second. Full grass foliage, this one. It is by the vertex color. Mm -hmm. Just like this. I guess it saves us one one instruction. Yep. There you there go. You. But then what did my vertex color look like for that to happen? Yeah, I guess it's just not consistent across all the cards. It makes me wonder if I could use that so that it uh, it only sways the bottom and then I... Uh... Yes, you could. You probably can. Interesting. So, let's see what this vertex color looks like. Standard, edge, standard, vertex color, paint, where's my vertex painter? It just looks like it's all white, so I'm not really sure why there would have been any, unless, no, I don't really know why. Mm. And the geo is just flat geo like this. So if I were you, to you set the bottom vertices to black. Sure, let's try that. Because if it's uh, multiplying by it, then uh, zero would be black would be zero. So that would get no movement, and then white would get yep. to all the movement. Let's go 0.5 on this. Uh 50%, 128. Fill this. There we go. Well, save as. Grass and perforce. Check this out. Save it. Well, export, export, export selected. And if that's the case, set to read only. Okay, let's drag it to perforce. Hey, did I drag this into Perforce? Mm -hmm. Work. Where are you copied it from? Let's read only. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to check it out. It's not on read only. There we go. Does it take a while for Perforce to register it? Um. Uh, is there? Okay. 
OK. And let's refresh this. Reimport. No, that's material. Let's go back to our grass. Let's refresh this. Reimport base mesh. Huh? Reimport material? Oh, and then I have to reattach the vertex color to this thing. Oh, right, right yeah. So it's multiply. Multi. Can you just, uh, if you, because what you can also do, like, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. is if you, like, if you want to multiply something, so if you just drag a pin somewhere, let go. Just drag a mm -hmm. pin into the middle of nowhere in uh, your material. Yeah. Uh, and that did not do what I thought it would. Now only, they're only randomly moving again. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not consistent. Hmm. What does your vertex color look like in Unreal? Good question. Uh... But I wanted to show you something, Jack. Can you go back to the material real quick? Sure. So if you just yep. drag a pin in front off of like anything into the middle of nowhere, let go, and then just hit the like the like star button, you know, the like little asterisks that you press on the on like your numpad. Oh yeah? Yeah. There you go, oh. multiply. Nice. Because <laughs> it's a math operation. So if you want to multiply, divide, subtract, or add, ah, right. you Clever. can do that. Instead of typing out the full word. Clever. This seems like it wouldn't really work though. Vertex by. Would it be v vertex? Okay, so let's take a look to see if this actually is. Yeah, let's take a quick look at your vertex color. How do I do this? Show. Is it. I don't know. Let's just take a look. Okay, Unreal Vertex. And show vertex color. Oh, it's it's up there. It's right beside where it says grid. Oh, vert vertex color. There you color. go. There you go. There. It totally didn't work. That's okay. So we're not we're not importing vertex colors properly. Yeah. There we go. Replace. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Re or replace or override? What would be the override. difference? Oh, no. Override is you're just forcing it there. So, yeah. Replace, I guess. Yeah. Reimport? There we go. There we ah. go. There we hey. go. Look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's see what it looks like in game. That's way better. Yeah. And then yeah. I can probably do the same with uh, these things. Yeah, I'm wondering about that. Okay, so uh, that should be pretty fast to do as well. Wow. Improvements on air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the fast way to do this would be in the UV editor. Uh, I think I go... Fern, yeah, well, no, yeah, all the base ones here. Yeah. This base one here, I think this is the base. Uh, these will be the bases. And this will be the base. I'll, I'll, I'll leave this one for now, just because that's going to be a bit wonkier. Mm -hmm. Go like this. Did that transfer? It did not. Damn it. Uh, what's the other way to do this? Uh, line? Does that work? Or either that or I have to do it in Maya. So let's just try this, this, this. Uh, this. 
this, this, and this. Collapse two. Did I get it? I did not. Just grabbed them at random. Oh. That's weird. Well, I got some of them, unless I miss... Oh, unless... Yeah, because it got... It looks like it got... Well, it's really hard to tell. Hmm. Let's try again. I think... Just oh try doing, like, uh, a couple. Let's do the big leaves first. Just do those, yeah. Collapse two. Nope, didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's try... Usually that does, but leafy faces, vertex, perhaps two. Nope. Mm. It's weird because it'll do faces. Like if I were to go unwrap, if I were to like select all these faces, and then I go mm -hmm. to collapse to open this up, and all those faces are selected. That's weird. Oh, oh no, it's not even. Not even all of them. No? Oh, no. Fish is happening. Well, either that or I have to go in and manually select all these, which will suck, but I've done crap like that before. No. Uh, open. Uh, let's see if I can do this one more time. Hold down control and do it. Nope. It just selected all of them. Great. Mm. Oh well. Oh, I guess I'll have to get around to select them all individually, which is going to suck. But whatever. Uh, mm. I still have to add a normal map to it anyway. So yeah, there you go. There's that. Yep. And uh, I guess that's all I have to show for the week. Unless you guys want to watch me work on on selecting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think uh, much more to go through. We talked about Steam stuff. That's pretty interesting. We got all the builds up. We got. So we could easily upload. There's all different versions. Uh, Don't yeah. about that grass. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot it. better. Yeah. Can't wait to get get it working on this now. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Oh, you put it on that too. I didn't even notice. Oh, that really? New or been that for a while. Really, really simple. Uh, okay. But the, these are all kind of sort of a bit. Mm -hmm. They all kind of, they're at different levels, so they would have mm -hmm. different offsets. Okay. I don't know if I like that light, flat color there. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm not a big fan of it. But yeah. Yeah. I'll do something with it. If I have to offset them a bit, I will. I could probably, do, yeah, I can offset these top ones, actually. Because it, it, it's only the egregious ones are the ones on the side here where they start intersecting with each other, and then you see leaves mm -hmm. clipping through each other. But they're yeah, all kind even, of... Even then, it's not that bad right now. Well, that's because I made them at different levels. So these are at different... Mm -hmm. The left side is at a different height than the right side, so that they intentionally mm -hmm. interlock. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But I, it's not so much with these ones. And I think it's only the, the back ones that would interlock anyway. Whereas these ones... Well, that's a weird destruction too. I should probably refine that a bit. Yeah, well, that's because it's using apex destruction right now. Yeah. Uh, we should probably just do a particle effect for it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. it's also yeah, it's one alpha card for the entire thing, so that's probably yeah. not helping. <laughs> it's just grabbing random. Probably add some more destruction bits to it, but yeah, it's not really great. Yeah. Nice yeah, so I got purpose. my tasks. Upcoming week, I'll get the normal maps working on here. I'll get the uh, the lighting and the offsets working properly, and hopefully the wind. I'm going to mm -hmm. start dropping some fog cards everywhere. I'm going to get that the lighting working on the Xbox controller and some other things. Mm -hmm. Were we... Is Because you, you mentioned baking. Like, you're just going to bake lighting into the Xbox controller? No, no, how, um, I'm going to probably add another light to the camera and have hmm. it flagged on channel three. Oh, okay. Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I believe.
basically just no. Controller. Yeah, I call it XP1. Where's my Xbox controller model? Uh, here it is. So let's just take a look at this. There was a. Uh... No, because you don't do it there. You do it on the actor that you place in the level uh, right. or on the blueprint. Right. But do we want to do another light for that? Or because I thought you meant like if you bake it and then we just do if you bake it in like max and then we just set it to unlit or something like that. Yeah, the, the only problem with that is like you don't get the nice reflections on the uh, on the controller and the button. Mm. So, right in editor. It's faster way to get there. Oh, but not doing that. Here. So it's like mm. this nice little like you see the speckler uh, yeah, yeah. moving. Yeah, you wouldn't get mm -hmm. that. Oh, okay. But let me let me just check something because like where is the uh I just oh it's it shrinks down when you're not using it oh yeah i guess it's there though b is this it mm -hmm. so you, oh, you have to select you have to select the mesh the mesh would be gamepad uh that's the analog sticks pad is the pad right so there I go. Oh, no, we only have. So it's our last channel, although I did read about that it is traditionally used for UI. So this is oh, okay. the second channel is used for props and characters, and this is for everything global. Mm -hmm. And the last one is generally used for UI. So there's only the three channels to use. So I think that's what I'll use it for UI. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. Unless we have another use for it, then we're gonna have to. Then I'll start considering baking. But I think that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. Sounds good. And then we can unflag it from channel zero and just have it only lit by that one light, and that way it's yeah. consistent and it stands out on its own. Okay. Yeah. It'll be. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think uh, right now with with it like that. With a sky, oh, it still takes into account the skylight, though. Mm, that's what it looks yeah. like. The skylight, uh, if you go like this, <laughs> skylight, if I go with camera light, doesn't really do a whole lot. Well, the camera light isn't there right now. No, well, you're not running the game, right? The camera light is attached to the game camera, not Unreal's camera, right? And okay, that's it. I could probably even just use a, a direction light for channel two. Mm -hmm. uh, or whatever light. thing to keep in mind is there's several meshes in there, so the analog sticks are separate meshes, too. Yeah, so we'd have to include that on separate meshes. If you include it on every, everything, so it'd be on the mm -hmm. analog sticks as well, and the, uh, the, control, the buttons, the bumpers. All right. Okay. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll get to that sometime this week. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Yeah, and uh, should we call it a stream? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, let's right. just get, so you're going to be doing controller stuff. What am I going to be doing for the next week? Uh, I guess I, I mentioned I'll I'll try and do the keyboard buttons. Still don't mm -hmm. have a solution for the controller. Uh, like doing this analog input versus like doing that on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we have that warning. We're primarily focused on gamepad and it is early access so yeah so there's that yeah today was a bit of a hectic day for us yeah <laughs> taking care of a lot of administrative stuff yeah. but <laughs> glad that that's out of the way now and we can focus back get back to focusing on the game yeah. it's funny because like everything in the game we're like super focused on really happy with the progress and then every now and then we have to take a step back and be like oh yeah there's a bunch of things about the business we've got to take care of so yeah uh, stupid business side of everything. Yeah. yeah. And this floating rock in the middle of nowhere. What was I thinking? There we go. Time as well fix it. Out. Happens all the time, man. Happens all Take the time. Take that, you rock. No, I can't do that. 
like that. Give it a touch closer. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Let's call it a stream. We got, I just, we just got a second viewer, which is why I feel bad leaving. But, uh, <laughs> Bye, <yeah>. second viewer. <laughs> sure, it's yeah. not me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a Bye. good night.